Hey there folks, Tim Slade here from the eLearning Designers Academy, and in today's video, I'm going to tell you why you need to stop locking down the navigation of your eLearning courses. And if you don't know why we need to be talking about that, you're in the right place today. So stay tuned. You know, when you spend a lot of time creating an e-learning course, gosh, it only makes sense that you'd want your learners to get as much from it as possible. However, it's easy to get a little overzealous about making sure your learners absorb all of that really great content you've stuffed into your e-learning course. And we all know how the saying goes, you know, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? So what is it, what, what am I alluding to here? Well, I'm talking about something we're all guilty of, and that's locking down the navigation of our e-learning courses. No! No! Now, if you don't know what I mean, trust me, you've probably experienced a lockdown e-learning course at some point in your life. And, you know, a lockdown e-learning course is when you have a menu or other navigation elements which you can't click on until something else happens. Like, you know, when you are waiting to watch a really awesome YouTube video, but you have to wait until that annoying ad at the beginning comes to a finish. And although you've tried to drag that little yellow seeker bar to the end, and I know you have, you quickly realize that it's locked. And although you can see it, you can't touch it. That's what I'm talking about when I say locked navigation. So where does this come from? Why do we, or sometimes our stakeholders and our subject matter experts, insist on locking down the navigation of our e-learning courses? Well, it usually stems from one of two things. First, I believe it comes from this idea that the content and the flow of our e-learning course is just so important that it must be viewed in a particular order, no questions asked. And second, and more commonly, I think it stems from a fear that some of our learners will just skip right over it all and jump to the end of the course and never receive any of that really important content that we've designed. And so what we oftentimes do, and I'll be the first to admit that I'm guilty of this, is that we lock down the navigation of our e-learning courses with the expectation that our learners will just be encouraged to take in all of that content and information that's being presented to them. However, the reality is, is that, you know, your learners are likely waiting impatiently for the slide or screen to come to an end so that they can click that next button and move on to the next screen where they have to wait again and repeat the cycle. And then, of course, once they finally get past the learning objective slide and <laughs> don't even get me started on that, they eventually get to some bit of content that they actually needed in the first place, but they weren't allowed to jump to uh, for whatever reason. Now, the problem with all of this is that while your learners are waiting, one or more of the following is happening. First, the learner feels like you don't trust them, because you don't. Second, the learner is playing a game on their phone or multitasking to pass the time, or worse, your learner has decided to just zone out altogether. And how do I know this to be true? Well, I'll tell you something that has never, ever, ever happened in the history of e-learning or mankind for that matter. What doesn't happen is that your learner discovers the course is locked down because they tried to click ahead to get to something they actually needed. And so they think to themselves, oh, well, shock, you know, the content of this course must be so important. I can't skip ahead. So I guess I'll just hunker down here and learn it all. Trust me, that's not a reality that anyone on the face of the earth lives in. Although we like to tell ourselves that kind of story. But here's the thing, locking down your e-learning course will not force learning to occur. I'll repeat that. Locking down your e-learning course will not force learning to occur. It's really that simple. And yeah, I know exactly what you're thinking. You're thinking, oh gosh, Tim, you're so smart and I love your YouTube channel, but uh, you know, my e-learning course has legal requirements that mandate all of our learners to receive all of the content. What am I supposed to do? Yeah, I get it. Sometimes our hands are tied and there are legal or 
compliance reasons that force us to lock down an e-learning course. That way there's a record that the learner received the content and that they agree not to violate those rules and policies presented in the course. And of course, if they do mess up on the job in the future, at least now the company has something that they can fall back on when they fire that employee. Am I right? I mean, talk about having an inviting and encouraging learning experience. Ugh. But wait, now, now that I think about it, if you just need some sort of record that an employee agrees to a certain set of rules, laws, or policies, why not just hand them a document with those items clearly stated and have them sign it? Hmm. I'll pause and let you sit with that for a moment. All right, but more seriously, I get it. There are times, for whatever reason, a course needs to be locked down. But here's what I challenge you to do going forward. Treat your learners like the adults that they are. If your learner is deciding to skip ahead in your course, it's either because they want to get to something they actually need, so why stand in their way? Or they just don't find your content valuable to them. And if that's the case, that's something you, as the e-learning designer, need to fix. Because remember, locking down your e-learning course will not force learning to occur. All right, so that's my rant on why we need to stop locking down our e-learning courses, which leads me to my question of the day. What other ways can you ensure your learners get the most out of your e-learning without locking it down? Share your tips by commenting below. And of course, as always, I want to thank you for watching. Make sure to hit that subscribe button below. And if you want to learn more about designing, engaging, and effective e-learning or growing your e-learning career, make sure to check out the e-learning designers academy at elearningacademy.io. My name is Tim Slade, and until next time, I'll see you around.